Welcome back. You're watching Nightline with me, Vuyo Mvogo. We continue focusing on women issues. Now, Team Netball South Africa has managed to reach the semifinals during this year's World Cup. The SPA Pro Tier's performance was hailed as outstanding. Netball South Africa now aims to make the sport accessible across the country. The country will host the Netball World Cup in 2023. At the moment, the team is struggling to get financial support. Well, Cecilia Molokwane is the president of Netball South Africa and is my guest this evening. Good evening, Ma. Thanks very much um, for your time. I mean, who would have thought that of all sporting codes uh, um, in South Africa, you are the ones who would today, you know, be holding the flag high and with that our hopes and aspirations? I don't think ever anyone thought of that in this country. And for you, why? Because of we are a female sport, and a female sport that is underrated. And I think the girls did well, and they, they made sure that everybody knows about netball and what is netball about. I think you were also glued on your TV when they were playing, because it was for the first time that a lot of people, you know, watch netball and understand netball. I mean, we were even talking to the other rugby guys who said to us, you know, we never thought netball is so fun until the World Cup and until the girls performed and carried the hopes of the country. And we're really proud of the girls, of what they did. Reaching the semifinals was not easy, especially Jamaica. Beating number two in the world is not an easy thing to do. So, but it goes back to how we prepared the girls and how we prepared the team to go to the World Cup. And that was going to my question. I mean, how did you do it? What was your game plan? What, what did you do? You know, when we took office in 2017, um, my high tech mode was taking netball back to the people, making sure that as a former player and as a former coach, I understood exactly what, what it takes for people to be winners. So I always believe in the say that says, when you want to know about the players, talk to the players. When you want to know about the coaches, talk to the coaches. So I, I decided to have a meeting with the SS Parportiers to say, girls, what is that that you need? And have a meeting also with the coach and to say, what do you need? And when we got in, firstly, the national players were not paid. So I said to the executive, we cannot go on like this. We need to compensate them in, in a way, you know, somehow to give them something, to give them courage and to, to really appreciate them as national players. Because at the end of the day, what we do is we just want their services, but we don't show our appreciation. We agreed five months in office, we started paying them monthly. Allowance. Was, was the money readily available or did you have to go and find it? It was not there. I said, if it means cutting some of the things in netball, let it be. But the girls will be appreciated, and they will know why they are playing for the country. Yes, some of them are playing internationally. They make a living out of netball. But what about those that are not playing international? And what about those that don't have medical aids or something? So one way or the other, we should take care of the girls and make sure that we do that. Then after we did that, we said, okay, if we want to take netball to another level, what do we do? We were playing as provinces at the SA championships that we play now in, in Eugene Gauteng. Then we said, no, no, we're going to take it back to the districts. We're going to play as districts so as we can go and unearth the talent that is there in the district. How Bongi was, 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 was spotted was when she was playing in the C section. We don't even have C section anymore in Nepal, South Africa. So if somebody didn't go to the C section and look at Bongi, Bongi wouldn't have been known if we're only going to play in provinces. So we said, let's go and give girls courage, want them to play and want them to go out of the streets and do something with their lives that can at least improve their, their, their homes. I mean, Bongi managed to build a house for her mom, managed to do a lot of things with the money that she got for Nepal that a lot of people don't know about. And then when we, after that, we said, six months in the, in the office again, we said, what about we go and bid for 2023? It was not an easy one. It was not an easy road. Some of the you know, people that are around us never believed that we could do it. When we looked at the time frame, the closing date was the 30th of June, and we started saying we're doing this when we're at the Commonwealth in April. So some were saying, you're dreaming too big. You know, you just got into the office, you're six months in the office. It can't happen that a person who just got into the office will think that will get a World Cup. I said, one thing that my father taught me before he passed on, he said, if you can't dream big, you don't even have a life to live. So 
I dream that we will have a World Cup. First time on the African soil, first time in South Africa, and first time a female sport, a dominated female sport, you know, goes out there and say, we want to host the World Cup. And that's what gave me courage. And the team that I'm working with, the executive that I'm working with, were never negative. They said, let's go for this, and let's go and sell it in council. And the council also said, okay, we hear you. Go and do it on our behalf. Let's not raise hopes or anything. And we did that. That's when we approached government. Because we know that without government, we can't do this. And then after approaching government, we went to the city of Cape Town. We had two cities, actually. We had Buffalo City and the city of Cape Town. That When we talked to them, they were interested. Other cities just gave us a no. The big cities just gave us a no at the beginning. So it's funny how now they want it. Because at the beginning, they never said yes to us. But anyway, we get, it went to Cape Town because of when you look at the infrastructure and you look at the hotels and how Cape Town is a tourist destination of this country, it made it easy for us. So that's why you see 2023. I think in a short space of time, we also, we are not even two years in office. And we also managed to get Telcom to come on board to actually, Telcom saw us when we were pleading to say we don't have sponsors so they came on board to do the telecom netball league to prepare the girls to go to the world cup then Teresa came on board puma came on board i think some are still coming on board and we're still pleading for those sponsors now as hosts of the 2023 world cup you're obviously going to uh, come under enormous pressure to do even better uh, than you did in in england what's the way forward Firstly, we have to, today we were announcing a squad of players that we, we selected because you are not going to build for 2023 in 2022. That, that, that is, you know, planning for disaster. So we're going to start now. We have, we, we didn't stop anything that is international. We have the Africa, you know, games that are coming to South Africa. We are hosting them in South Africa. We have 14 countries coming from Africa to play the Africa games. In November, we've got the English Test Series, the England that beat us. It's coming back to South Africa to play with us. And I don't think they'll beat us on our own soil. We will make sure that we do. So we're preparing to us 2023. We're giving the team the support that it's, 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 it, won, it wants. And we're saying to them, we are here to, to, to give you the courage, to give you the support that you need. So as, when we're building to us 2023, we don't say... We're closing doors for anyone. We are not closing doors for any player. Those that are selected in this week are the ones that are in the SA Spa Championships. And if the, the coach that will be announced very soon to say, this is the coach that will work with the team. This is the coach that will take us forward. Because we need to announce the coach and the assistant coach. Because we, we brought in the former coach as the mentor coach to the team. Norma Plama is coming back as a mentor coach because we want consistency in the team. Now, a few things you, you've, um, you've, you've raised here. Um, let's start uh, with uh, the team. Um, it, it doesn't mean that the team that went to England is the team you are focusing on solely. You're going to cast the net wider. Did I hear you correctly? Yes. We're we focusing on them. They're part of the squad. Yes. So there's nothing wrong with them. Yes. They're part of the squad. They still have to come back to show us that they can do it better. For which most of them, I'm sure, we will do it better. But if there's new talent, as I said, we cannot close them down. We have to give people a platform. This is where the new talent should get a platform because you, you, Bongi, right now, the captain, who's, who's playing in the tournament, and we are humbled that Bongi is playing in this tournament. There's nothing forcing her to play in this tournament. But for her to come with her, her district, Ungungundlofu, to come and play here, it humbles us as Netball South Africa. And I mean, even Spa, I think they're the happiest. We have Kanisa Chawan also playing with Mangaung, where she's playing. I mean, we are humbled by their gesture. And also uh, Zanele Vimbele, who's playing for Johannesburg Netball. I mean, we are humbled because we thought coming back from the World Cup, they will never go and play the Champions League. We also said, if you want to rest, you can rest and, and do that. So they are the part of the squad, and all of them, that when they are part of the squad. So it's, it's, it's anybody's game. If you but, 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 I mean, but, but for other aspiring players, right, uh, outside of the African uh, uh, Championship, Championship, right, and the England series. What opportunities are you going to create for them over the next few months and years to uh, give them the opportunity uh, to, you know, raise their hands as well? I like it because we've got the President's 12 team. If you don't make it into the SA Spa Proteus, you have a chance of playing the President's 12. President's 12 is the feeder 
to the SA Spa Proteas. So if you didn't make it then, and like today we announced even other top 10 players that we said to them, these are the players that they've seen talent, but when they rated them to the ones that are in the squad, they still lack two or three things, but they will work with them. The coaches will work with them and make sure that they get there. So anybody who's aspiring, there's President's 12th team, there's, there's the SA Papro tiers. So we've got a feeder system into this team. We've got the under 21s. Mm -hmm. We've got the under 19s. Yeah. So what are you doing there at like grassroots level? You under 19s. We've got them. They play the championships. We've got the SA under 19 championships. We've got the under 21s that are here with the seniors that are playing with the senior championships. We all have programs for them to say if you're under 19, we want now. Under 19s are going to play the Commonwealth because they wanted to play this first five. So we know that if they go and play the Commonwealth, you know, it's, it's, it's something, the youth Commonwealth, it's something that we're building towards. And after they play that, they go and play the under 21. We've got the under 21 netball championship, the world ones in Fiji in 2021. So there's a program for all the girls. And we, we also wish as South Africa that the Kosana games, you know, the Kosana, the the Kosana, that is the, the Confederation of African Netball. I mean, we, we, we wish that it can re be revived so as our players can have more games, more game time, because if we are truly speaking going overseas, playing overseas teams, it's very expensive. It's not cheap. Like when we invite England to come this side, for England it's very cheap. I mean, they're pounds, we doll we, we rains. We're not even dollars, we rains. So we, we're trying to get games for them to play as much as they can and play international games. The coach of Under-21, Dr. Elsa Jordan, said to me, President, we would love to go and play outside of the country. Hence, when we were in England, we made sure that we talked to the high-performance manager of England. Then they said to us, no, they will bring their Under-21 side the year next year because all that they budgeted for this year was for the, for the senior team. So we're trying to do something for them. It's not easy because to do these things is about money. And, if, and, if and of course, I mean, you also have uh, several other challenges like, I mean, people I mean, have to see transformation as well, whether it's the coaches, whether it's the staff, um, you know, the involvement of former players and so on. You have to do that as well. We're trying. I mean, Rome was never built in a day. I got this and I have to fix it in a way. I mean, we, 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 we carry the burden and we, I'm not going to sit here and blame anyone. They say, if you're a leader, you say, this is, didn't work. How can I make it work better? So we said and say, how do we make it work better? All of us was sitting as Netball South Africa. Then we, we came up with the, the issue of, okay, let's try and balance. Let's try and, you know, we, 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 you, you, we'll take a horse to a river but you never force it to drink. Those who are willing, we say to them, come, we're willing to work with you. We want to make you coaches. We want to make you umpires. We want to make you administrators. We want to make you technical people. Avail yourself. We're here. That's why we're taking it back to the people and we're saying we're working as districts because we know transformation is an issue. When you go to Sasko, you go to Region 5. They don't even compromise. It's 6-6. Six, six. If you don't have six white, six blacks, the team is not growing. So we, we don't even want to go there. We want the team to be representing the demographics of this country. That's where we push into, but we cannot do it just because of to please people, but not at the end of the day also looking at performance. We have to balance the two. Well, congratulations once again, and best of luck going Thank forward. You. Thank you.